My name is Carrie Wartell, and I am the Soybean Extension Specialist at Virginia Tech, here today to talk about potassium management in soybean. So proper nutrient management in any crop always begins with routine soil sampling and following your state's recommendation for both fertilizer and lime applications. However, there are situations that may still leave you vulnerable to yield loss due to a potassium deficiency. And the major concern we have with potassium deficiency in soybean is what we call hidden hunger, meaning you can be losing significant yield without ever seeing those visual deficiency symptoms that you expect to indicate that you have a problem. And by the time you're seeing those visual deficiency symptoms, we consider that to be a severe deficiency. You can think of this like hunger. By the time you feel hungry, it's time to eat. Whereas if you wait until your stomach growls, then you're just not you anymore and your soybean crop can't optimize its yield. And so you want to be providing that potassium before we see those visual deficiency symptoms. In order to do that, we need to be proactively tissue testing to monitor our crop's nutrient status. We recommend dividing your field into management zones and within each management zone, collecting at least 18 leaves from different locations within the field. And within each of those leaves, making sure to collect the uppermost fully expanded trifoliate leaf. So this is usually about two to three nodes down from the top of the plant. All those 18 leaves create one composite sample to send off to the lab for analysis. And once you get those lab results back, you're gonna know your potassium concentration in your leaves. Next question is, how do you interpret those results? Because we know potassium is a mobile nutrient in the plant, we expect potassium to be moving from the leaves into the pods and the seeds as those pods and seeds are developing. So throughout the reproductive growth stages, we have a dynamic threshold for sufficiency. You can see the dynamic critical concentration curve where our leaf potassium concentration is our y-axis and those are our lab results. And then our days after first flower is our x-axis. So depending on when you sampled, your threshold will differ. If you find that you're above that threshold, then you know you're sufficient and you're not uh, yield limiting by potassium deficiency. However, if you find that you're below that threshold, then you can suspect a yield limiting potassium deficiency. You can also use this curve to estimate your yield loss depending on where you fall, and that can help you make an educated and informed decision about potassium management in season for soybeans. If you do find yourself in that deficient zone, you then have this window of opportunity to correct your deficiency, and that depends on the severity of the deficiency. So if you have a very severe deficiency with those visual symptoms, you have 20 days after your crop begins to flower to correct that deficiency and expect minimal yield loss. However, if you have a hidden hunger situation or a mild to moderate deficiency, that window of opportunity expands all the way out to 44 days after your crop begins to flower. So this is really encouraging because it gives us the time needed to go out and proactively tissue test, send those tissues, those samples to the lab for analysis, and then interpret those results and react accordingly before we see permanent yield loss. And if we do find that we need to have that corrective application, we recommend somewhere between 60 and 120 pounds of K2O per acre, depending on the severity of the deficiency. So more severe deficiencies require the higher end of that rate, whereas a mild deficiency is going to be on the lower end of that rate. The important thing to remember is that that large quantity cannot be applied with a foliar fertilizer source. So we need to be relying on a granular potassium fertilizer like muriate of potash in order to apply that rate. We also need to remember to either have an irrigation or a timely rain to incorporate that granular fertilizer and allow that crop to take up that potassium and correct that deficiency so that we can minimize any yield loss due to a potassium deficiency in soybean. With that, I would like to thank my colleagues at the University of Arkansas for leading this research and also thank you for your interest in potassium management in soybean.